is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Good evening, I'm Amanda Starantino. Tonight, a shooting in Lawrence is shining a light on an all-too-familiar issue. Police say a man shot his ex-wife at a gas station near Sunnyside Road in Pendleton Pike around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. She was taken to the hospital in serious condition. Investigators say they found the suspect in a nearby neighborhood where he shot and killed himself. And that shooting happened just hours before a conversation marking Domestic Violence Awareness Month. RTV6's Cornelius Hawker was there for this important discussion, one that hits home for many. Anybody losing a life, one life is one life too many. Marta Bell is a retired Indianapolis Metro Police Department detective. She helped start IMPD's domestic violence unit 19 years ago, a unit she says was very much needed. It doesn't just affect the abuser and the person that's abused. It affects the children, it affects their family, it affects the community, it affects uh, employment. It just affects the community as a whole. In a community conversation Tuesday night, Marta and four other panelists who work with people going through domestic violence talked about how this conversation must be ongoing, not just delegated to a single month of awareness. Nobody deserves to live an inhumane life and abuse is an inhumane treatment. The woman who found herself the target of violence today at the hands of an ex-partner was seriously hurt. Her life forever changed. Police say the man who used to be her husband took his own life. It's a situation sadly similar to what many of the women in this room have dealt with. That's how the Indiana Healthy Marriage and Family Coalition got started um, in 2006. One of the, the uh, Deltas was murdered by her estranged husband who lived out of state. He came to Indianapolis and shot her and then went to his home state, I think it was New York, and killed himself. Now, that woman's sorority sisters from Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated hold events and conversations like this one, hoping to create real change in our community. You'll notice plenty of empty seats. Organizers say that highlights how many people are uncomfortable talking about domestic violence in a public forum. It's something Marta says she and so many others want to change, letting domestic violence victims know it is okay to talk about your abuse. Reach out because you can't get help. People cannot help you if they don't know that you need help. Working for you in Indianapolis, Cornelius Hawker, RTV6. And as you heard Marta say, reaching out for help is the first step to get out of an abusive relationship. If you need help finding someone to trust, you can call the domestic violence hotline at 1-800-799-7233. And you can find more resources in this story at theindychannel.com. We are working to learn the circumstances surrounding a triple shooting on the north side of Indianapolis. Officers were called to Boulevard Place near Crown Hill Cemetery around 9.30 tonight. Police say someone fired gunshots into the back of a home from an alley, hitting two women and a man. The victims are stable. Stay with RTV6 for updates on this developing story. Now to the forecast, a cloudy day has turned into a dreary evening. Will it be a rainy morning? Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory is here with your forecast. Yes, plan on some rain for the drive to work. A cold rain at that. Temperatures 41 right now in Logansport, 42 in Lafayette and Zionsville. A little bit warmer from Indy to Muncie. Let me show you rain from St. Louis moving to the north and east on the north edge of that. One to three inches of snow possible across Illinois. If you've been out this evening, you probably had the intermittent wipe on. We've had some drizzle, nothing real heavy, just kind of setting the stage for overnight rain to develop. Temperatures across central Indiana, warmest in the southeastern portion of the state. What will you wake up to? The rain that's in Illinois now will overspread central Indiana in the morning. As we go through the day, very little temperature change. Still in the mid 40s at noon. Temperatures in the afternoon warm to around 50, and that'll about do it. When I come back, we'll go through your hourly Halloween forecast, talk about our snow change chances and when temperatures will be below freezing. An Indianapolis Public Schools police officer suffered minor injuries after a crash on the northeast side. The accident happened around 6 o'clock this evening near East 46th Street and Millersville Road. It appeared to involve an IPS police officer and one other vehicle. We will bring you updates as we learn new information. I don't want them to get hit. I mean, I don't want the teachers to get hit. You know, listen to the teachers scream at the cars to stop. I mean, it's, it's nerve-wracking. 
One day after a Montgomery County woman called RTV6 about safety concerns on her street, we are getting answers from the people in power. The woman from Newmarket lives across the street from her grandkids elementary school. She says the street is an accident waiting to happen thanks to speeding cars and a missing speed limit sign. RTV6's Cameron Riddle shows you what town leaders have to say about this issue. Bonnie Hendrickson says she's made numerous requests for safety improvements like speed bumps or making the entrance to New Market Elementary School a three-way stop. She says her complaints to the town board have fallen on deaf ears. Now the president of the town board is responding to RTV6. As in many small towns, we've had a lot of signs stolen. Mm -hmm. And the uh, school zone sign that was at the end of this street, which goes... Uh, just north to the school. It's been missing for uh, about nine months. And I, to be honest, I never even noticed it because I've lived here 49 years. That's not something you take for granted. Joe Dodd says he's talked with the town marshal today and now new school zone and speed limit signs are being ordered. Hendrickson says she hopes officers can patrol the school zone, but Dodd says that's hard to do with only two part-time officers. He says speed bumps may not be the answer either. The cost was going to be more than what it would, for, for two speed bumps, the cost was going to be higher than what it would take to repair every road in town. Dodd says with budget constraints as tight as they are, he's hoping the South Montgomery Community School Corporation will kick in some money, allowing a school resource officer to guide students across the street safely. I've got two great grandchildren go to that school right now, and uh, I don't want to see them get hit by a car. Working for you in Montgomery County, Cameron Riddle, RTV6. I said, this is enough. I I'm calling six for help because there's nothing that one person can do until they turn to the news. Also working for you, Citizens Energy tells RTV6 the company sent crews to inspect a leaking hydrant today after a frustrated homeowner reached out to us for help. Samantha Newkirk says water has been leaking off of Belmont Avenue on the southwest side for about three months. She says she's alerted citizens in the city several times, but no one has fixed the problem. With them trying to raise the rates of our water and our gas and everything around here, that's, that's ridiculous because we are the people who cannot afford this. We cannot afford for them to not fix their problems so that we continue to have an increase in rate, rate hikes. We will continue to contact Citizens Energy to find out what their crews found today and what they're doing to fix this problem. And if you have a problem and need help getting answers or action, contact us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. An auction tomorrow could shape the future of a beloved Brown County town. A real estate liquidation sale is scheduled for 1 o'clock at the Brown County History Center in Nashville. Around 25 local shops will be on the auction block. That's about one-third of the businesses in downtown Nashville. They were all owned by one man. After he died, his kids decided to sell the property. Starting Monday, there will be one less traffic light on the west side of Indianapolis. The Department of Transportation plans to remove the signal at Washington Street and Victor Street. That intersection was once the entrance to a Kmart. Dot says now that the store is closed, the light is unnecessary. There will be some lane restrictions while the signal is removed on Monday. Election Day is one week from today. From police staffing to school safety, we are taking a closer look at some of the issues voters are facing. In Johnson County, a Center Grove school referendum is asking for nearly $25 million in taxpayer money over eight years. The funding will go towards safety and security efforts like additional school resource officers, upgraded alert and camera systems, and more counselors and mental health staff. We spoke to people on both sides of this proposal. Hopefully the community can understand um, the importance of this. And, and I know that it's a big ask, and, and we just hope they take a step back and look at it from a parenting you know, side of things and, and, um, and maybe kind of do what's best for all of the students here within the community. I don't feel like a single one of us should have to pay more on our property taxes just because the school needs more money to hire social workers and counselors if the money is somewhere else. Center Grove is one of five school districts in central Indiana with a referendum on the ballot. Tomorrow we will break down the proposal in Lawrence Township. And in Indianapolis, crime has been an ongoing talking point in the race for mayor. RTV6 asked all three candidates, Democratic incumbent mayor Joe Hogsett, Republican challenger Jim Merritt, and Libertarian candidate Douglas McNaughton, what they would do about IMPD's staffing levels. We've got to stop the idea that people don't want to be a police officer in Indianapolis. The mayor of Indianapolis has to have the back of, of, of not only the chief, 
but as well as the person on the line, the, the police officer. The truth is, in the last four years, we have probably hired in excess of 300 police officers. But uh, we also have an older police force, and when they retire or other forms of attrition come into play, uh, that's why we talk about increasing IMPD by a net number of 150 additional officers. Whether they're understaffed because they don't have enough people, or if they're understaffed because there are city policies causing things like the homicide rate to go up, all those things need to be addressed. Election day is November 5th. You can vote early through Monday. A major company based in central Indiana is starting a new partnership with local high schools, how it will help put students on a path to lifelong careers. And next, investigators have pinpointed the cause of the latest wildfire in California. You're watching RTV6 News at 11. And we have more work to do. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Thousands of people are still evacuated tonight as wildfires rage in parts of California. ABC's Alana Gomez is in Brentwood with the latest. California's governor looking at the ruins of destroyed homes, surveying the damage left by the Getty Fire. Only 15% contained as California braces for a powerful new round of Santa Ana winds that have a dangerous history of turning sparks into infernos. These are probably the worst winds that Los Angeles has seen in the last two to three years. Those winds, some hurricane force, will fuel already brutal conditions in the hills just above Los Angeles. Over 1,100 firefighters trying to contain the blaze on the ground and from the air. The expected dangerous wind conditions spelling no relief for thousands of residents still evacuated. So people will not be returning to their homes because uh, those extreme wind events we're going to see, uh, those can pick up and trans, uh, transfer the fire uh, miles away sometimes. Meanwhile, in Northern California, those winds are already picking up, fanning the Kincaid fire, visibility near zero as these crews put out hot spots in Sonoma County. Over 4,000 personnel are working on that fire as we speak. The new fire danger forcing another round of power cuts. Some one and a half million people expected to lose electricity this time. The manager of this supermarket firing up the generators again. It's just been been wild. It's just been crazy. Officials now saying the cause of the Getty fire here in Southern California was a tree branch falling on a power line causing it to spark. In Brentwood, California, Elena Gomez, ABC News. The NCAA should move with the times. That's what leaders are saying about their own organization after a vote to make a major change. Today, the Board of Governors voted unanimously to consider allowing student athletes to make money off their name, image, and likeness. The decision comes a month after California passed a bill that allows college athletes to profit from endorsements. The NCAA board says the change is part of the effort to support college athletes. I'm really enthusiastic about what the board has done. It's in a very important step toward modernization of NCAA rules to provide more opportunity for our students. So that's an inherently good thing for everybody. The language in the proposal spe specifies payment for an athlete's likeness would need to be done in, quote, in a manner consistent with the collegiate model. The NCAA is not considering salaries for student athletes at any level. My vision, my power. That's the theme of this season's Steward Speaker series. Steward Speakers is dedicated to engaging the community with America's best and brightest leaders. Tonight's talk at the Warren Performing Arts Center focused on financial literacy in the African American community. Our brains have been hardwired to connect happiness to spending. We have to disconnect happiness in the brain from spending and connect it to investing and saving. RTV6 is a proud partner of the Steward Speaker Series. An Indianapolis family is one step closer to having their own home for the holidays. Today, volunteers with Career Carrier started its latest Habitat for Humanity project on the west side. A dedication ceremony is set for mid-December to welcome a woman and her two young children to their new home. It was an amazing, successful day today. We finished out 99% of the decking with a brand new house style, so a new roof line, and our volunteers did an amazing job meeting the challenge, and the house looks fantastic. Carrier says it has donated heating and cooling equipment for every greater Indianapolis Habitat home since 1995. 
and dancing will make her return to Mass Ave just in time for Halloween. The new electronic art structure is scheduled to be installed tomorrow and has been shut down since May. The Indianapolis Cultural Trail raised more than $200,000 to pay for updates and repairs. Organizers say the new Anne will have the same look and the same famous dance moves. I she might get a little a button cult. you could push to get some extra dan dance moves. Maybe you know? she was going to have some more moves there. A little different, who knows. She'll be back in time for some winter-like weather, Eek. that's for sure. Let's hit the headlines. So let's jump tomorrow for one second. We'll come back to it. But the story, Halloween. Falling temperatures and rapidly falling temperatures. The wind increasing during that time period. And showers. I don't designate rain or snow showers. I think we'll see both of those. There's the wind. It increases as the colder air arrives. So right during the evening evening hours and then before midnight we may even see some gusts to 40 miles per hour as far as the forecast keep lowering these temperatures a little bit we'll just wait and see how it plays out early afternoon where the temperatures are and then they continue to fall off you'll need to dress for temperatures closer to 30 degrees and that wind is what will drive the wind chill down as far as the rain snow mix four o'clock the models have sped up any transition to a wintry mix or do snow showers four o'clock rain across central Indiana in the western portion of the state mixing with some snow. Then you see the whole western half of the state with some snow showers and rain showers at 7 o'clock. By the time we get to 9, the western portion of the state drying out. Eastern Indiana with a little wintry mix. And then the cool dry air pours into the state. These are wind chill temperatures. I'm duty bound to mention those. Upper 20s to lower 30s at the beginning of the evening and down into the 20s by later Thursday night. What's happening tonight? Rain started to close in on the Wabash River. We'll come in from Benton County down to Terre Haute and eventually Sullivan over the next few hours. I point this out, one to three inches of snow expected overnight into the morning in Illinois. Chicago will have wet streets, but should just be slushy as temperatures will be above the freezing mark. Just be aware that if you're headed toward Chicago first thing in the morning. Rain chances all day long for us, really high. Periods of rain, temperature doesn't move much, right around 50. Tomorrow we'll have winds out of the northeast at about 20. There's your morning rain. We get a little break, then it sweeps back in in the evening hours with the next slug of showers to move through on Thursday. There are your falling temperatures Thursday. High temperature early in the day, falling off eventually into the 30s by the time we get to uh, the late evening hours. Those winds will be a major story and dress in layers and try to stay dry. Temperatures we move to Friday with dry condition sunshine helps we'll start around 30 below freezing hit 45 for the afternoon high temperatures again into the weekend upper 20s in outlying areas with a decent amount of sunshine early next week temperature still on the cool side and don't forget this is the weekend where we fall back you'll turn your clocks back one hour as you go to bed on saturday night early next week temperatures back into the low to mid 50s and generally dry. Here's a seven day forecast. Rain tomorrow, then showers around on Halloween, mixing with changing to some snow showers before they leave, then a dry cool stretch Friday through the weekend. Need an umbrella for those trick or treaters. Yes. All right, hey Brad. Amanda, good evening. Kevin, thanks. We'll stay warm this weekend. Trick or treat out there tomorrow, or Thursday night rather. The calendar has not quite turned to November yet, but it's indeed time to get to some college basketball. Roughly half of IU's roster is new this fall. Many of those guys will be called upon to make a big contribution at home tonight for a lone exhibition game taking on Division II Gannon University. Joey Brunk's one of those new guys. Nice move into the lane for the hook shot. Joey had six in his first game wearing the cream and crimson. Justin Smith led the scoring effort with 18, grabs a rebound off the missed three, puts it back in. This game was close for the first 17 minutes, but IU had a 9-0 run to close out the half. Traits, Jackson Davis, baseline slam, could see plenty of those this season. He had 12 points, nine boards as the Hoosiers come away with an 84-50 54 win and they're still getting to know each other at this point. I would say the first half was definitely a little awkward. Um, it was kind of, we were kind of playing together for the first time, um, different lineups, um, really, you know, just seeing what the game atmosphere is like. Once we kind of got settled down at halftime, we really, you know, got into our groove and really got it going um, and uh, everything started clicking from there. 
Indiana's regular season starts at home one week from tonight. As for Butler and Purdue, they will also each have a single exhibition game. Those are both Friday night at Hinkle and at Mackey. The regular season for the Bulldogs and the Boilermakers starts next Wednesday night. The Colts have finished all seven games this season at a margin of seven points or less. Their five wins are by a combined 20 points. It doesn't really matter, though, how they're getting it done. The fact is, right now, they are in a prime position in the AFC standings. The Colts sit as the number two seed currently with only unbeaten New England ahead of them. There are a trio of teams with five and two records, but Indy holds the tiebreaker right now. So at this trend, they would be looking at a bye and a home game for the playoffs. And five of the next six are against teams with 500 or under records. Quarterback Jacoby Brissett talking today about this early season success. When you watch this play, it's never been, oh, this person is just like, carrying the team or something like that has also been, you know, we've played complimentary football for seven games. Uh, but, and I think that's just the mindset of the players. Uh, you know, we all feed off each other. Colts are at Pittsburgh this Sunday, a game they certainly can win. And those next two games home against the Dolphins and the Jaguars, they'll be favored in those. All of a sudden, could be looking at eight and two. Pretty good right now. Okay. Good numbers. Some happy Colts fans. S Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> well, coming up, surround yourself with the holiday spirit while making money at the same time. We'll be right back. Zero, zero. We look forward to serving you at Barrington Jewels. Hiring Hoosiers is an RTV6 initiative connecting you to resources, training, and education to help you reach your career goals. Central Indiana High School students can get a head start on the path toward a high-paying job through a new partnership with Cummins. Today, the company announced its first youth technician apprenticeship program. Qualified students will gain experience in the automotive and diesel industries. Participants and leaders say the goal is to jumpstart lifelong careers. My hope is to get a lifelong career, which seems like it will be, you know, a good paying job that will help me support myself and it's just exciting to be able to get an opportunity to do something like this. Well, this is an outstanding opportunity to go into a career that's going to give you a well-paying job and lifelong employment. And I would encourage anyone that has an interest in working with their hands and doing this type of work. Please look into this and join us. We need you. The program serves students at 11 high schools, including Avon, Brownsburg, Danville, Mooresville, Plainfield, and Speedway. All week long, Hiring Hoosiers is sharing seasonal job opportunities. Many places are hiring for the holidays. And not just major retailers, popular local attractions like the Chris, Chris Kindle Market in Carmel, they also need workers. Employees in the retail huts make $15 an hour. Maria Murphy, the market master, says working at the Chris Kindle Market is a great way to make some extra money while spreading holiday cheer. So we're looking for people who are very gregarious, able to engage, um, have a lot of time. We have a lot of retired folks who have come out of retirement for five weeks of the, the winter to join us at the market, as well as stay-at-home moms and people who want to get involved in the community and see their neighbors during the winter months. It's just a really fun, enjoyable atmosphere for people to get involved with. The Chris Kendall Market is looking to fill positions as soon as possible. We have put a link to the employment application on our website, HiringHoosiers.com. We will be right back. Better by working together from day one. Halloween is only two days away. If you are not sure about your community's trick-or-treat hours, we have an extensive list on our website, thedchannel.com. There you can also find Halloween safety tips, top haunted houses in central Indiana, free treat deals, and more. Rain's only an hour away. If you live in Covington, Petersburg, out up toward Fowler, that's moving north and east. What do we wake up to? Showers through central Indiana. That's what we'll have tomorrow. Periods of rain through the day. Temperatures only around 50, and that northeast wind at 20. And we wait for the snow showers Thursday night. Just wait patiently. We wait with anticipation. <laughs> Thanks for making RTV6 your choice for news. Good night.